inverse functions. So these do the reverse of the original function. So whatever the function does, we need to work out how to do it backwards. Um, it's the same as when you're doing multiplication, the inverse would be to divide, or if you were adding, the inverse would be to subtract and so on. So if f of x was 2x, then the inverse function, which we write as f to the minus 1 of x, would be half x. We could put a 3 into f of x and it would map onto 6, so the inverse would have to do the opposite. 6 maps onto 3. We'll try it with another one. Minus 4 would go to minus 8, so minus 8 has to go to minus 4 on the inverse and so on. So to be able to find the inverse function, we go through a process. We'll do it for this example here, where f of x equals 2x minus 5. So the first thing you do is write y equal to your function of f of x. So y equals 2x minus 5. Then you switch over the x and the y. And then you need to rearrange to make y the subject once again. And there we have the, the main bones of the inverse function. We just now need to write it in the proper format. So now we write that f to the minus 1 of x is whatever we have y to be here. So f to the minus 1 of x is x plus 5, x plus 5 over 2. Now do a mental check always when you've done your inverse function, check that it works. So let's just pick a number. Um, we'll try it for x is equal to 3. If we put 3 into f of x, we'll get 2 times 3 is 6, minus the 5 is 1. So if we put 1 into our inverse function, we should get 3 back out of it. So on our inverse function, 1 plus 5 is 6, divide that by 2 is 3, so yes, it works. If you plot a function and its inverse, they will always form a reflection of each other in the line y equals x. So we'll do it for those two we just found. y equals 2x minus 5 and the inverse was x plus 5 over 2 and you can easily see that's a reflection in the line y equals x. Now this comes up in exam questions a fair bit that you need to be able to plot and show the relationship between a function and its inverse so make sure you remember this. Also, functions must be one-to-one -to, -one to have an inverse in the first place, and you will um, also be asked questions like um, to, to state whether a function has an inverse or not, and you need to know that a function only has an inverse if it's one-to-one. -one. It can't be a many-to-one function, because if you then turned it around, you would end up having outputs where you're not sure which input they came from. Right, let's do some examples. So we've got g of x is x plus three, uh, x over three plus two, and we want to find the inverse and sketch it along with the, showing the relationship between them. So we write y equals our function, switch over the x and the y, rearrange to make y the subject, and then we're going to plot them. So there we've got our original function, and here is our inverse function, and we can show the mirror line of y equals x. Okay, we have now a function h of x. We want to state with reasons whether h of x has an inverse function or not. So, if you were finding the inverse, you would start by writing down y equals your function, so we'll go with that again. And we'll see what happens as we try to move through that. So we've got x squared plus 2x. Now here we have a problem because x squared is not a one-to-one -one function. And we know that um, functions only have an inverse if they're one-to-one. -one. So, for example, we, we know that if we put in a 0 and a minus 2 here, which are the roots of the equation, both of those would get us an answer of zero. So y would be zero on both of those. If we tried to put that into an inverse function and we put zero into it, we wouldn't know whether we were supposed to get the zero or the minus two as our input from that. <clears throat> so we know that it doesn't have an inverse now because it's actually a many to one function. It's enough to just get to that point there and say that it's not one to one, therefore it doesn't have an inverse. <clears throat> 